Eden Cause here with Just Be, and we are about to take a spiritual boom. We are at an unprecedented time in human history where we are transitioning from 3D to 5D within the great spiritual awakening. This video and audio podcast is the place for you to find your truth beyond politics, your sovereignty, your voice. Let's kick up your vibration now. By the way, each episode ends with the Just Be practice to do just that. P.S. Just to know a little bit more about me, I'm a psychological empath, meditation master, dimensional healer, all the things to help you within this ascension. To learn more about me, visit me at EdenJustBe.com. And let's get this party started. Hi there, everybody. Oh my gosh. Eden with Just Be Spiritual Boom here in association with the Grassroots Warrior Network. And I I like being associated with a warrior network because that's what I am, a spiritual warrior. Come on. And I'm so excited about the show today. So we are um, on. Oh, 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 let me. I got notes for myself so I don't forget these things, which I'm doing it right now. Okay, first, before we even get started. Please like or subscribe, what, however you are viewing this or liking this. I have been doing the show now. It's it, like I, I say it and I can't quite believe it. It's almost two years, a year and nine months. And I've had some incredible guests. So today I have compiled some shows for you to watch. And it was so much fun to do that. But uh, just to give you some background, I did the beginning of these through episode, let's see, 36 by myself, I would have some clients on the show, but basically just to give more truths about the great awakening, that sort of thing. And then I expanded this into having video guests. So it it wasn't only expanding myself that suddenly I was going to be on camera, but I had to learn how to edit all this as well. So episode 36 uh, started with Saul Luckman. So I have a clip of him in here. And if you want to listen, listen to the other episodes leading up to this, because they're, I, I think they're pretty good. You can find them on Spotify, Apple, Google podcasts, as well as 19 other directories. And at some point I may transfer some of those over to video as well. So I have 12 highlights to share with you today, ranging from the likes of Carrie Cassidy, Joe Rosati, mm, Margie Flynn, Jim, Jen McCarty, Sasha Stone, and these are in no particular order either. I uh, just to let you know, I had so much fun putting this together. And I will do this occasionally because there, there's just some really great juicy stuff in here. And uh I will end this podcast like I normally do with a Just Be Practice, which will be led um, an old one from Sananda Christ, which was Christ, which was excellent. Yet before we get on with the show, it is, what is it today? Uh, September, 2023, man, there's a lot going on in the world. So I'm going to keep it general knowing this, this won't be published for two weeks. Okay. Still stuff in Maui, beautiful thing races coming together. I'm going to leave it at that and see what you found. And then knowing that there has been talk of potential masking and lockdowns starting in this month, September, and lockdowns potentially in December. No fear. I'm just telling you that this may happen, that there is a plan in place, but who knows. Uh, For me, I will not comply. So I'm not really concerned about anything, but yet I am taking a trip in November. And this will be the first time that I will get travel insurance just in case. All right. Last thing before we begin, I want to give you an update on my smart meter, which I did a separate video for this yet. Let me talk about it a little bit. So uh, this is like, you know, sometimes you do feel like an army of one and it's okay uh, to stand up for things. I called my power company about seeing about getting the smart reader removed. They were going to charge me for it. And then they were going to increase my rate every month. So I decided for a while, based on some guests that I had on the podcast, I was going to get a smart meter guard. So for around $80, I purchased it, installed it myself, very simple. And this product will cut down on 98% of the radiation from my smart meter, which turns out it's, well, it's right my by my bed. 
And one thing that I was reading is you want to at least have 40 feet from your smart meter. But now that I have the guard on, um, it's just delightful. And to let you guys know, a day after I put it on and I got a Wi-Fi guard container, uh, I felt uh, an incredible difference. Then let me share this with you. My power company sent me an email saying I can't put anything on my meter. <laughs> well, I did, and I'm not going to take it down, and I won't reply to them yet. Uh, I want to get some more, you know, people people into this before before I openly start, uh, you know, raising more of a ruckus. Mm. Again, such a warrior, right? Now. Let's kick off the show with episode 44 with Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot. I hope you enjoy these episodes as much as I enjoy them all. All right, on with the show. This is it. Start becoming aware of the Great Awakening, or have you always kind of been in that? What What would you say to that, Carrie? Uh, well, yeah, so it's a little strange because for me, it's not a Great Awakening. I mean, I hope it's a Great Awakening. <laughs> But I was awake since I was born, um, and I was unusual in that regard, I know. I was always, I wrote a book, it's called Rebel Gene, and I highly recommend it if you're interested in my story. But yes. uh, bottom line is that I I just kind of knew a lot. I And <laughs> so um, I just would say, you know, things to my mother and to people around me, and I just knew things. I thought I knew everything. I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I know I didn't now. I know I really didn't, but I thought I did. And I saw the earth as just being a place that needed tons of work from the minute I got here. And I was always aware there were other dimensions and other beings and other, um, you know, alternative realities, I guess you might say. So I just grew up with that understanding. Um, one of the so how are, how was your family? Were they just like, oh, whatever, Carrie? Or were they pretty responsive to you? Or what what happened with that? Uh, well, they did call me know-it-all, Carrie, since I was a little- Here, episode 45 with Reiki master and patriot, Margie. To go back to your point about spiritual people being led in the wrong direction. I hate, I hate to have to say it, but they have yeah. it. <laughs> it's yeah. because, you know, I, I said this for decades. That the powers that be, the dark forces that are running things and that intercede and interwoven and are overarchingly in control. They use our best instincts against us, our kindness, our desire to know God, spirit, whatever you want to call it, our desire to um, live a full and worthwhile life. They use that against us and they pit us against other people who to us seem like monsters and we don't want to be like them. We want to be good people, so we'll go home and meditate. Meanwhile, the city's burning around us, and we're not doing a damn thing. And this is what we have to sh- we have to shake ourselves out of this spell. And I really have said for a long time, probably fifty years, that this planet has been under uh, a vibrational spell, an energy force that has interfered with our ability to receive divine grace and to basically understand it and interpret it. We all have it, but we don't access it. And more people between the calcification of the pineal gland yes. and the garbage and the food and the distractions on televisions and movies and everything else, and just the overall stress that's gone on for the last almost three years with this COVID mm-hmm. nonsense, there is such a, an amount of pressure on people that it's hard for them to be discerning about what is the right thing to do. But in right. their gut, most of them know something is radically wrong. Mm -hmm. And if we can reach those people and just help them open their eyes and ears a little bit and don't expect them to, you know, jump off the diving board at this end just yet, but maybe they're full in the way. Yes. Some episode 68 5d luminary Jen McCarty for the divine feminine, because the divine feminine is the spiritual leader 
and and is the spiritual protector of the divine masculine and so the masculine has is is really heavily um endowed with traumatic war codes the divine masculine has experienced war we have not experienced that and so they're very very traumatized a lot of masculines most masculines probably 100 percent of masculines um have ptsd deep deep chronic ptsd and so they they they're kind of like lost their mind in terms of like the right way so they are banking on the divine feminine to lead them and so she has to have led herself mm. out of this pattern of promiscuity of being overly sexually open she she has to have um done the work with with her own self and really really come to an enlightened state of consciousness raised her spiritual vibration and stabilized in enlightened consciousness and so you're not going to do that by hooking up with some guy you met on a dating app with the wrong intention. Now, that's not to say that you, 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 you know, that the universe may guide you to go on a dating app because you're going to find your twin flame. That's not to say that I'm talking about that hookup culture and that that ten, because the thing is, you must understand that through Hollywood and and books and everything like that, magazines and stuff like that, we've all been programmed to perceive people that speak like me as prudes okay now this is an agenda because um they they want the that they the cabal the old forces that were governing our world do not want to see people in their exalted sovereignty mm -hmm. exercising like impeccable spiritual hygiene because that that is just too much on the angelic spectrum and there's been a gender it's like we have within us the angel the angel and the devil really we this realm is heaven and it's hell mm -hmm. you know it's both it's duality and so there has been an agenda to try to pull us into our base identification with our lust with our desire with this that and the other and that's fine if you want to explore that on a spiritual level, like if that's for your evolution, whatever. But if you really, really want to, um, you know, practice high level spiritual hygiene, then then I would um, be very, very mindful. And abstinence and celibacy is your friend unless it's with your divine partner. And then, of course, like when it, if it's with your divine partner, it's like all the doors of orgasmic bliss will open. Episode 37, musician and truther, Joe Rosati. In the world, and we're all fighting for better, uh, a better world. We're fighting for children. We're fighting yes. for humanity. And, you know, being in, being in this fire, being in this pit, if you will, <laughs> it, it has been a challenge, um, but it's, it's worth it because I know that, that people are going to, whether they see it now whether they see it sooner or later that they're going to see that that's what motivates us that that's why we're here and they may not understand things that we talk about at first but eventually they will and we're here for them um as the un as the as the great awakening unfolds and they understand more of what's going on so that's why we're here right and i i, I can't not do this like I'm just sitting in my house right now, but yet every week I'm like, do I keep moving forward with this? And I get, yes, I just, yeah, I, it's like, I have to speak what is real, not only with my work, but I just have to, like, it's just boiling inside. It just has to come out. Is that the same, same for you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've been very vocal. Um, and I think part of that comes from, you know, I've, let, let's let's get into part of my awakening. I think that's something that yes, because that, that would be my first about. question. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, it was nine one one, and uh, you know, if people as people will learn that a planes can't, can't bring down buildings, and another thing that might be challenging to learn is were those truly planes or were those holograms? Okay, so that's that's another topic to look into. That's that's another part of what's unfolding here. There were. Um, many explosives planted in the weeks and months prior to that happening. Um, there's also many firefighters and, um, you know, first responders that had heard explosions. And there's a, a film that I would recommend and we'll, we'll get the link below on that one. I, I, I might have it back, but it's either scientists for truth, 911 or scientists for 911 truth. And you got to be careful posting some of these things because, they may not allow you to. So it's working around the censorship is a lot of what we have to do. And so, you know, 
time goes on. And another part of my awakening process was personal. I'm, I'm a kid that built a skateboard ramp and uh, it, that, that part of it was great. But where the awakening part came in is I went around and got all the okay from the neighbors, but you know, reality is different. So what happened was one, they did say, okay, but then they wanted to um, have a decibel reading done. And what, what happened and why I had to tear the, the ramp down eventually. Now, obviously this was years. This is when I was a kid in 16, 17, but they submitted the decibel reading that was at the ramp as the one that was at the neighbor's yard. And so it was much louder. So I kind of saw how they manipulated that to make it work so they could just quell this and not have to deal with the ramp anymore. So that was the, my, another little awakening moment as to what's, you know, how is this, this information being handled? Who's doing this and what's being done with it? Another was so my father. Ask, was, so the decibel ahead. level, was there music being played? No, it was just, just the, 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 the rumble ramp. and rattle of the ramp itself. No oh, way. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So, and, and I get it. It sounded loud, but you know, as kids, and we even said, look, if we just, just like between, you know, right. four and 6 PM, is there just, cause you guys already said yes. And we understand you don't want it late at night, but just, but by then the, the ball was already rolling or the wheel, I guess was already rolling. Right. And so right. I couldn't really stop that. I, it, it's, I already, you know, they already rat, rattled the nest, if you will. And so mm -hmm. that was kind of a, an aha moment. And then moving on, you know, when, when another, and this was around the same time, my dad okay. was a pharmacist and uh, he had a, a big piece of land in the Tacoma Hilltop area. And he ended up, he trusted six doctors to utilize that land, which he owned. He was then one seventh owner in this, you know, this big fancy medical building. So he doesn't own the land anymore, but now he was part of the, you know, the, the owners one seventh of this, of this professional center. Right. And what the unfortunate part was he then he, in, in a nutshell, he basically ended up having to sell his one seventh share to pay off taxes and penalties and all this stuff. He got really bad advice on and you know, I, my dad was never the same after that. And you can imagine that that really that crushed him because he really trusted the doctors. And I don't know if it'll ever be fully known if they were vindictive from the start. I don't believe that was the case. Mm -hmm. But the fact is he put his trust in those 10 doctor or those those six doctors. And then the IRS two years later <clears throat> is coming to our house <clears throat> to, yeah. to, you know, take our house away. And luckily... <laughs> that didn't happen because he was able to navigate around that. So none of the other doctors stood up for anything or took portions of it, or it was all like put on him, his responsibility. Well, it was that he, in order to, in order to pay the bills that he in incurred, the okay. only collateral he really had was his one seventh ownership in that. So he basically had to sell that to the doctors. So now the doctor's, basically they they now the six of them owned everything and he's asked out of the deal and it was his land to start his with start yeah mm. so that that was that was a real yeah. wake-up call and he's like you know what was i supposed to do they were doctors i trusted them right keep, let's keep going and it was like okay, okay. so that was 2000 or that was see, that was 1990 no 90 late late 90s late 80s rather late 80s mm -hmm. i was in high school so let's flash forward to 2011. He ended up getting bought out by Safeway and becoming the, the head pharmacist for them in like 2001 or so. So he ended up being the pharmacist still in the building that he had formerly owned for about 12 years. And you can imagine going into that. And it used to be, you know, let's say it was 6,000 square feet. Well, now it was about... Uh, maybe 1500 square feet. So everything was, you know, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, and you know, my mom said at, at one point, and I, you know, he, he almost wanted to do something to himself, but he didn't, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like he didn't really have yeah. the will to keep going. And, uh, but he had six kids. And so wow. it, five at the time. So anytime I think life gets hard, I, he had it way tougher than I did. Right. So he's, he's, he's been a, a huge role model for me. And also my grandfather with my name, Joe Rosati, 
uh, came over here at age 12 uh, and, you know, went through Ellis Island and started a whole new life. So as challenging as these times get, like they've been through a lot more challenges than us, you know, than me, at least, uh, you know, I mean, everybody has their battles, but I can't imagine going, you know, being 12, going over from Italy on, you know, right. to, and then he, my grandfather worked his way up uh, to running um, the a rail yard and being in charge of 60 men uh, in, in the Auburn Stampede Pass area. So I, yeah, I come from a, a line of fighters and, and entrepreneurs. And uh, so flash forward to 2011, um, my dad was then given the choice to either leave Safeway, walk away or get fired. Oh, Why? Because he paid the $2 copay for people that couldn't afford their, their drugs. So, he, for, for, oh. so for him making sure that they didn't die or get sick, he got fired. So that was another red flag wake up oh. call for me. Like how, this world is not designed for giving people uh, all that, uh, you know, that much in some ways it's, I mean, and I know that there's examples that probably right. counter that, but when it's your saying. own father, it, it leaves an impact. Yeah. And didn't you tell me he passed away like a year and a half ago? Yeah. he A year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To Damn. congestive heart failure. But of course they tried to slap the COVID label on that and, mm -hmm. and they did. There was nothing we could do about it. And then through FEMA, the only, the only thing we got out of it was FEMA somehow giving like, uh, giving a, a check for having had that on your, and everything's just so twisted. It's so right. twisted. So, Thank you for allowing us to put, fee, you know, COVID on your, your dad's certificate and the hospital making whatever 30, you know, grand, but here's your little, thank you for that. Yeah. Episode 70, Poetic Vanguard, Sasha Stone. You know, backstage. I, I'll be I've never seen you in a suit and tie. Have you actually done that before? <laughs> Well, of course. I mean, I've I've had to address parliaments. I've had to um, I've had to convene judicial commissions of inquiry. Yes, I've I've had okay. to wear suits and ties, which is the hangman's noose and the cufflinks. I mean, this is all um, Babylonian mysterium cult um, to totemism and and symbology connected to the enslavement of humans. So we're all these um, you know blessed idiots are clamoring off to the office. Wearing their uh, Givenchy, or their their Gianfranco, so beautiful suits and ties and waistcoats and and polished shoes, they're just prisoners. I mean, wearing the 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 totems of of, of prisoners, arguably the greatest mathematician in the world. Please, guys, please. <laughs> um, and they're just the most beautiful dogs. The three of them, they just to look at. They're coming in like. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, just, oh my just, gosh! So, so cute and happy. I know, I know. Thank I know. you for showing that. Guys, no more potting downstairs. <laughs> We're trying to do a show here, a series show. Exactly. I just don't want to be caught kicking a poodle in the head live on air. It just wouldn't. It wouldn't go down to <laughs> By doing it, I, I was in rock and roll to purge myself of the primal scream. I was not in rock and roll ah. to get laid or to get stoned, and. Um, I have nothing wrong with getting laid and getting stoned. And I've certainly been laid um, more than my fair share, but that was not the <laughs> point. That was not the point, you know. Of, of my... I'm just going to laugh at that. For... Well, good for you. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but but that was never my point. Episode 40, Dimensional Healer, Anastasia Salihu. Action through our healing in order to bring chains in our lives. So it's all about bringing chains, finding confidence, finding our, our own truth um, and what works for us apart from uh, outside of what society told us we should want and desire and do. Yes. Can you explain to everybody what the Akashic Records are? Yeah. Uh, the Akashic Records are basically an energetic database. It's a quantum database that is all around us and inside us. So we're connected to the Akashic Records all the time. And it, it has the, all the information of all souls from, from all time, past, present, future, um, about all of our choices, everything that has happened to us. By the way, I have my cat here, so he's, he's a little bit needy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if you see any pose coming out, it's him. <laughs> 
Got it. Um, and the Akashic Records are an amazing tool because they give us information outside of the perspective of ourselves. So they give us an ob objective information of what has happened to us and how it affects us and how to change it. That's why I love it. Because sometimes through connecting, even connecting with our higher self sometimes give us the perspective, gives us the perspective of the higher self. So the Akashic Records give us, gives us a perspective of higher dimensions of where we can go, what we can achieve, who we can be, basically. Okay, tell, for someone who has no idea of what they are, you, you've given a lovely explanation. Can you make it even more basic and, and tell us how you tap into it? Yes. So the the uh, the idea of the Akashic Records is not new. It's something that has been going on through all of the ancient uh, civilizations, like ancient Greeks, uh, ancient um, Indi Hindus, um, uh, Buddhists. Everybody, like everybody who was more esoteric, was able to understand that that there's a higher intel that holds information about everything. The um, Sanskrit word akasa means soul book or a library of souls, which means that it's, it, you could say that each one of us has a book that says everything about us. How we tap into the Akashic records is another story because basically it's done through intention. Mm -hmm. So if we intend to connect to the Akashic records, then it's done. Everybody has a soul book let's mm -hmm. say connecting to the akashic records especially when we connect we want to connect to our akashic records is easy translating the information that we get from the akashic records and asking the right question questions is the thing that needs practice and understanding because we have to be very specific at what questions we ask and what they mean mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. and what where we want to get what kind of information we want to receive because the the akashic records mirror the intention. So if we go into practically when if we go into the acoustic records with the intent to uh, with curiosity, let's say, oh, uh, let me see who I was in a past lifetime, just because what we get is more need for curiosity, we want that answers. It will be confusing. Does it mm -hmm. make sense? So yes. we have to be very specific at our intention, why we're connecting, what kind of questions are we asking? what do we want to receive from those questions how open we are so we have we have to kind of put our ego self on the side yes in order to connect with the acoustic records and the questions and the intention is what is really important okay. episode 71 multi-dimensional navigator ida farhat because i had my own experiences after having a kundalini uh, activation and being targeted um i said okay i i want to know what's going on okay so uh, let's it, it let's talk about that personal for me yeah all right what ha what happened to you so uh 2011 i had my my activation a kundalini activation and i heard um i got a download or information that said they are killing and raping my children i'll never forget that it was, I didn't like freak out or anything, but I knew that, okay, there's something happening here. I was seeing apparitions in the trees. I was having, you know, I was using telepathy. I, like all my gifts were online and my light body was lit up. And when that happens, it sends information out, sound frequencies, colors, uh, my aura. I don't know if I've Oh, neat. Right? So they can, they know, they see when people are, you know, there's a sound alert, basically like an alarm. Okay. Somebody's woken up and there are gatekeepers and there are some, and then, you know, that don't necessarily want us to awaken. 73 Universal Akashic Records Translator, Akasha Hawaii. So how, how was mm -hmm. Hawaii overall with, with COVID? <sighs> Oh man, um, lockdowns were pretty brutal. I would say mm -hmm. not as, as bad as I've heard about Australia and some other countries, but um, <laughs> this is how ridiculous it was. 
you couldn't go to the beach as part of lockdown. You could only go, you could only traverse the beach to go into the water. You could not sit on the beach. Um, it, it was insane. We're How employed. is that even possible? It, it was ridiculous. Yeah, if so. you don't know anything about crystals, but you want to get into them, I would highly recommend people get a clear quartz crystal. That Episode 75 and my only consistent guest, interstellar communicators, Pia Orlean and Cullen Beard Smith. <laughs> this, 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 is a, this is a very, very deep and complicated subject matter. Um, historically, 5G is simply the newest iteration, the, the newest invention of cellular phone communication. We started out years and years ago, generation one was generation one. We moved to generation two and the communication in those days was really sketchy. I mean, cell phone reception wasn't very good. When it jumped from G2 to G3, it got much more serious. And the amplitude of the EMF waves was amped up remarkably. And people began to feel strange. They began to have symptomologies. They began to have problems when it jumped from three to four, which we're still it. We're still right. Many, many people are not currently actually using 5G. It's available, but either their servers or their particular phones aren't really 5G yet, but it is available to many, many, many people around the world. The problem is 5G is so much stronger than all the other levels. It's a different pulsed system of energy. It's much stronger. It has a completely different effect on the human body. And I, I like to use the word pernicious. Pernicious simply means deadly mm -hmm. and harmful. harmful. 5G is harmful to any living being or structure. And I would like to go backwards a little bit in explaining this. There is a wonderful book out there called The Invisible Rainbow that documents how every single time we have increased the radio frequency or the bandwidth of the radio waves on this planet through starting with telegraphs and telegrams to telephones and on up to what Cullen was just describing, the initial cell phones and all the way to the 5G. Every time we had a boost in that technology, there was a plague of some sort. Swine flu was one. There's, there's been something each time that's been aligned with a demonstrable evidence that there's something going on that makes a human organism sick. So it's documented evidence that shows how and why. What hasn't been written about quite as much and people are turning a blind eye to is what 5G actually does to the human body, the animal body, the plant kingdom. In our bodies, 5G makes the oxygen that we have that is in our bodies spin in the opposite direction of the way it's needed. So therefore, we cannot get the energy we need from cell to cell to make our bodies function correctly. People are feeling extreme fatigue and they don't know why. That's the major symptom that's coming across. Disrupted sleep, digested, di disrupted digestive system, headaches, um, dizziness, balance problems, all kinds of real problems are coming that people don't know it's coming from 5G because these satellites, whether you have a 5G phone or not, are circling all the time. Heat surges. You know, all of a sudden you feel really, really hot for no reason. 5G is not really about having better cellular communication. Mm -hmm. That's not the reason it was invented. Want to talk about that? Well, it, it was sold as a new idea, a new mechanism, so that we would have broader bandwidth for computers through the internet and better cell reception. And... As Pia just hinted, 
that is not the case. 5G is an engineered, I don't, I don't know how to say this simply, 5G enhances surveillance. It, it is a mechanism that actually helps those who want to know what all of us people are doing around the world are doing around the world. And there are so many examples. I could talk about this for days, honestly, and I have to be really careful to, to shorten what I have to share because I can go on tangents that will take up this entire interview. <laughs> um, things that, that are connected between AI and 5G are tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Every, everybody who, who happily bought a widescreen, flat, tubeless television is being surveilled. Samsung, one of the largest flat screen television manufacturers in South Korea, admitted two years ago that they have a surveillance capability where they know by visually watching through the screen and microphoned through the screen, they can hear and see what's going on in the rooms in everyone's homes of what's going on. Th this was an astonishing admission by a huge international corporation to actually tell the truth. That connection of these devices, it's also true for all 5G cellular phones. They actually, when I say they, I mean the companies that manufacture these things and then sell the information to whomever wants to buy the information, whether that's a government, whether that's a corporation. This surveilled information is available for purchase by people who want to know what we're doing. And this, this goes into every part of society. Advertising. Yep. Advertising is being completely sublimated and completely controlled by what they know we want. And everybody has this experience, Eden. Mm -hmm. If you dial up something on your computer, a product, within five minutes, similar products will show up on your computer yep. through advertising that you didn't ask to be shown on your computer screen, which proves immediately that this is all being watched. This is all being controlled. It's a scary situation. We've been pre-programmed to accept this so that we didn't really understand as a species what was happening to those controllers, what they were doing to us. We've been programmed to listen to higher authority, listen to the medical community, listen to the government, your doctor, your parents, your educational system. Oh, excuse me. Don't don't forget religion. Religion. Your religion. <laughs> absolutely. We've been programmed that there are no answers and no wisdom within us because we're just miserable little, to use the Christian terminology, sinners. Mm -hmm. Sinner, by the way, means uh, someone who makes a mistake, and we make our best learning by making mistakes, which mm -hmm. is something that we should embrace. Oh, we made a mistake. Let's learn from it and move forward. Anyway, we've been programmed that we cannot have divine connection with source, that we cannot rely on our own intuition, our own heart wisdom, or even our own thinking and cognitive abilities. We have to go to an outside source to tell us what to do. This programming has led us to accept whatever government, religion, and the medical community tell us to do. When 5G was first implemented here, we were in the middle of what was called a COVID pandemic, being told that we had to be in isolation Five. so mm -hmm. that we could watch what they were doing when they put up the 5G towers. But if you go back and look, all those videos of people dropping in the streets in Wuhan and in Italy, Milan, Milan Italy, are all the two primary first startup 5G cities. Cullen wrote an article at that time that we can give you the link for. It's called Technovirus, about what the real virus really is, letting people know we are being manipulated and controlled by something that's making us sick that is not viral in nature. We, we, th this is something that, that is well known. There's so much documented 
both anecdotal and scientific information about the COVID pandemic. With our combined research and the people that, that, that we think of as colleagues around the world, we have, we have sifted through hundreds, if not thousands of documents talking about what really happened during COVID. Was there really a virus? Was there really something that scared everybody almost to death? And I mean that term, almost to death. When I wrote the, the blog or the paper that I entitled Technovirus, what I did was I made it very clear that the people that Pia just explained in especially Wuhan, China and Milan, Italy and Perth, Australia, and there are a number of other cities around the world where 5G was rolled out more significantly than other places. When there were videos showing people falling down in the streets, it was said that these people have a biological virus. Unfortunately, we weren't being told the truth. These people right. were falling down because they weren't getting enough oxygen because of what Pia explained. 5G was making it impossible for the amount of oxygen necessary for the cells in our body to work not only normally, but to communicate with each other, which they do billions of times a day. I'm gonna say something very serious and, and very well documented. There Bring was it. there was no COVID pandemic. It, it was a complete and absolute fraudulent financial controlling thing that went on. Pia touched on this. Oh, the person who kicked it off, episode 36, author and pioneer, Saul Luckman. Yeah, I mean, I know you went through your own illness and that, you know, for a lot of people, um, that's the wake up call. You know, you, you go through thinking through a lot of your life thinking that you're, you know, you're invulnerable and pervious and immortal. And, uh, you know, for me, I got really, really sick after getting some jabs when I was headed uh, down to South America for dissertation research. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I ended up having a kind of uh, lost decade of autoimmunity where I had something, you know, a lot of people would, would think of it as something along the lines of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, that kind of thing, with right. really awful food allergies and sensitivities and that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, that was, that was a huge wake up call for me that, you know, I, I wasn't what I thought I was. And then, then I wasn't, I wasn't helped by the things that I thought would help me like allopathic medicine. So, you know, that was another major, major wake up where I, I was left to my own devices which included a kind of wanderhar into the alternative medicine world and energy healing. And most of it totally unsuccessful. I, I just wasn't helped by much of anything. There were a couple of things that helped me that were of an energetic nature. And that's what really clued me into the power of energy. One of them was Qigong that helped me restore some of my energy. It didn't cure me or anything like that. Right. And then aller allergy elimination technique was another piece of the puzzle which really opened my eyes to uh, the power of very simple, energetic, um, non-invasive interventions to change a lot of health outcomes like allergies and that sort of thing. So that, that, that was the stage that was set for me to go into a much deeper dive into uh, the relationship between sound and DNA and our, our kind of multidimensional aspect and eventually even into ideas having to do with uh, this notion that we're not living in a real world at the moment and that may be why we have such magical abilities that seem so uh, like so much like programming or breaking breaking programs or hacking the system whatever you want to call it episode 42 slipstream shaman Todd Wilcox. Than they used to be. Uh, okay. So this whole field is is much easier to talk about now than it was even five years ago, and uh, light years different than twenty years ago or you know longer. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, um, you can tell by the color of my 
hair. I'm not blonde. Um, <laughs> I've I've been around a little while, and and when we when I would talk about Bigfoot or UFOs or or um, out of body experiences, those kind of things in high school, um, you you got the you got the eye. The the teacher would kind of look at you sideways. A lot of the students would look at you sideways. It just wasn't as accepted. Um, now it's it's almost where you can't call a lot of this stuff paranormal anymore. It's it's moving rapidly into the normal, and will become a part of um, just part of how we do it. Um, so, and I love the way you said not always covered. You know, instead of calling it paranormal, I thought that was brilliant. Good job, and uh, I, I might steal that. <laughs> I think <laughs> I got it from you. Oh, <laughs> maybe I didn't. I don't know. I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, who knows? I say a lot of cool stuff that I forget about in our basement. And I did a timeline regression that took me to a day there when I was riding those horses. And I looked up and there was 12 of what I call watching men standing there looking at me. Some people call them shadow men, shadow people. Some call them the hat man. And what it is, it's a, about, a, about a six foot tall entity that just watches. Um, they, they're dark. You can tell they have a face. You can't really see it. Looks like they have some kind of a hat or a helmet on and usually some kind of a large, long cloak or a long coat uh, or if you, you know, duster, like a duster that the cowboys wear, something long like that. Typically, they just watch. And so they were they were watching me at a young age. And so I don't know if it was because I was um, doing something different or or what, but I, I think I've been a part of the the side the side of what we watch for a long time. Yeah. I I think it's, I think it's been forever. That's delightful. So when they were just watching you, literally just watching, Hey, just watching. let's, let's yep. look at him, ride his horse. Look, look yeah. at him go. And I, I've never figured out what they do. I've, I've seen them since, and I've talked to many people that have seen them and they're typically just watching and you only see them for a second. Uh, but yeah, just, just watching. And I'm not sure exactly why they're watching us or, or what there's theories that it might be our own um our own for future self you know a future incarnation of ourself it might be our overall guiding um soul that's watching us there's a lot of different theories about it that it's a time traveler that's an alien that it's a ghost um i'm really not sure what it is there's been people that talked about being very scared when they see them i have never been it's always been a a comfortable feeling just just that they were curious that they just wanted to see what was going on and closing us out, episode 66 with Galactic Ambassador, Sananda Christ. And we'll go right after this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and really get into this practice. It's wonderful, which is why I included it. Like See you next time. Out, Bye. Guys. Just be practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do feel an activation coming up. So it's yeah. going to be, um, you know, it's going to probably be a little different for everyone. Maybe as I go through it, I'll get some information, but I'm just going to, as I say, I let it kind of queue up. Um, it's definitely residing. There's something going on within the solar plexus. So this is going to be affecting your solar plexus. And when I look into the solar plexus, we each have a little pyramid that I see is like as a power center. So what I feel like I'm going to be doing, uh, yes, what I am going to be doing is kind of going into each of your power centers and giving you a beautiful energetic nudge. Um, so there we go, my quantum. Mm. <laughs> Hello. Oh. So it was, um, mm. I know it was very short, very fast, but it was very powerful because I saw it just blowing open all of the chakras. The crown chakra just went open, seeing this beautiful light, and then it went, it just burst out energetically. Um, and that's something when the when you raise your vibration, it doesn't take very long energetically to do something. So <laughs> it's like, yeah. a, it was like a little power session. So, so nice. So cool of you to be here. I went from being off most social media to being on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or True Social, and you might be watching this on YouTube, Rumble, or BitChute. Or you might be listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I'm on over 19 directories at this point. So connect, comment, subscribe, like. 
Oh, and my intention is to have a new episode out Wednesday of each week. Oh, Lordy, more to come.